Hello folks, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Now you might be struggling this week with being able to create some form of schedule or routine and naturally that can be quite tricky to do. You may be using a task manager but finding that a little bit difficult um, to obviously take advantage of. Um, some people don't work well with task managers. So in today's video we're going to be giving you bit of an overview of how you can use calendar blocking. Now calendar blocking is a well-received technique. It's very simply blocking out your calendar. Now we're gonna show you a few uh, processes or little hacks that could make your calendar blocking a little bit more efficient. Uh, we're gonna jump onto the calendar over on the Mac and give you all that you need to know. So hopefully um, you'll be able to calendar block like a master. Anyway folks, let's dive into today's video. So here we are on Google Calendar and I'll use this one uh, for demonstration purposes. Naturally, um, you can use whatever you want. Apple Calendar is a good one. Uh, I use the majority of my time on Woven, which I really like as a calendar application. Um, but you can see that it can work on pretty much any experience. Now, as you can imagine, um, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. The first way you can do it is by start doing it per day. If your day varies a lot, you may want to just do this uh, for the week ahead or just for the next few days or even for the day that you're preparing. So for example, you may do something like this. As you can see, I'm on the 8th of April. I may, for example, go ahead and plan the 9th of April. So in this case, I may drag uh, a new event. And as you can see, it's a very simple way to start adding an event. And you can do this with the majority of calendar applications that you have. Now, in this period of time, you may want to say meditate. And uh, of course, you can select the calendar that you're on. But the best way to be able to color distinguish from other tasks is by going into more and selecting a different color. So in this case, I may want blueberry tasks for my health and uh, I can press save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate the day as if I was planning the, the day ahead and then I'll show you the other method in which you can do. So here we are, I've gone ahead and planned a day and you can see this is pretty much the calendar blocking technique. I can plan a day ahead and this is not necessarily recurring. So the second way you can do this is if you have a routine that you know is going to be recurring, for example, you may uh, have set up a weekly routine under this isolation and you want to be able to have that set in your calendar, then all you have to do is go into these tasks. Uh, in, for example, the uh, Google Calendar is press edit and then go to uh, repeat and press daily. Now, if I go ahead and save that, you can see that that task is replicated across a day. So if there's any specific events that you have, this is a good way to actually repeat them and copy them daily. And you can add even to avoid weekends and details such as that. So there are two ways of doing it. To be clear, you can plan your day or days ahead, even your week um, manually, which might take more time, but might be a bit more fine-tuned and a bit more respective of some of the activities that you already have in your calendar. Or you can go ahead and create these repeat options for your entire calendar. Now, during that feature, what I actually did was I created a few color options, particularly in Google Calendar. You can see that although this is my main calendar, Francesco, um, which is dark blue, I could go in and change the color options. I'm pretty sure you can do this on the majority of calendar applications, but in this case, I actually selected it that green was a health activity, uh, that yellow was a bit of work activity, and light blue was for personal time. And you can see here that I set that out. And what a lot of people like to actually do is go ahead and see those colors because it helps them to distinguish what the day looks like ahead and almost prepares them mentally. So all they'd have to do is go to that color option and uh, I probably would change meditate to health and you can see there that that ha happens there. 
So what's nice is if you open your mobile device, you could see the day ahead. And uh, what's good is if you have a calendar that sends notifications, you'll get reminded that these things are coming up. So you'll be able to get naturally the notifications that you need to prepare for the next activity. Now, during this period of time, you could use something like the Pomodoro method to hone down on your time and make it a little bit more efficient, working in 25 minute stints to work, make the most and work during this editing time. Now, one of my biggest recommendations is to put out some time uh, that is a hefty bit of time. It's for deep work. It's for uninterrupted work. Now, you may be someone that has regular meetings, so you may have much smaller periods of time that go block in and block out, which is absolutely fine to do. But if you wanted some uninterrupted time for deep work, say you're studying or you're doing something very intense that demands a lot of attention, then that's the better way to do it. Now, some people actually like to have this blocked out to uh, the maximum, allowing them to touch each other, on, allowing them to touch uh, the sides of each of the blocks. And that is a very popular technique. And that's really to really take advantage of your time. So make sure that you go into settings and check how long uh, the meetings are set. So for example, with me, uh, it doesn't actually, it gives me 10 minutes buffer time between meetings as I'm using these. So it won't necessarily go all the way from 12.50 to one. That might be quite useful to give yourself a little bit of a pause or a break. Now, if you're someone that has a nine to five workday still and you're working from home, you may want to use the colors uh, in a different fashion. So for example, let's say with this day, you may want to dedicate a color per client. So for example, I could say, um, so for example, let's just uh, chuck on a few projects. So as I said, I may want to go into settings and change this to a different color per client I'm working with. So for example, um, this one could be different and uh, I could go in and uh, be able to associate the color of the project to what I'm working on the day ahead, which might be a good visual representation for some people. One thing I've seen recently is people making their uh, calendars a lot more attractive by adding emojis. It's a nice way to be able to add some sort of like colorization, some brightness to your calendar. So on Mac, all you have to do is press Command, Control, Space. And here I can add in a picture of a, a video camera as an emoji. Go ahead and press Space and Save. So that appears up there very nicely. Now in my application like Woven, I can go ahead and create templates, which allow me to produce these meetings more regularly. And I can just go ahead and press uh, the template button and it will reproduce that uh, pretty rapidly without necessarily me having to recreate them every single time, which you may do inside of Google Calendar. Now, if you wanted to, um, you can go ahead and duplicate this, which may make it easier for example, if I wanted to go and choose a separate time um, and uh, be able to put that time in there. So that's one way that you can save a bit of time. So I noticed that some people do like to um, actually time block using intensity. So for example, um, they may want to have, for example, green tasks as their relaxation and uh, red tasks as more intense activities. So let's go ahead and show you what that would look like. So as you can see here, this might be a way to manage the intensity of the day. You don't have to do it for say meetings because you may not be able to judge the intensity of a meeting, but you might want to do it for tasks. And many people use calendar blocking as a way to line up the next task for the day. And you can connect it, especially with Google Calendar, with applications like Todoist. I know that recently Fantastio 3 added that connection, but it's a good way to be able to associate tasks to it. But you can actually technically use this as a form of task management. Now I've showed you the long-winded way on Google Calendar, but all you have to do is double tap on this and actually you can change the color icon just from here. It's not too difficult. 
Okay, so of course, when you're creating uh, an experience like this, it may be different in the application. So I just wanted to briefly show you how that looks like inside of Woven. This isn't sponsored by Woven, but it is the application that I use as my go-to experience. So you can see that if I was doing it in Google Calendar, it would associate to what I have here in front of me. So obviously that syncs pretty well with Google Calendar. Now, the one thing that you can do is go over to templates here and begin creating templates for the certain activities you may do and be able to quickly add them in. So I wanna go here and create a template. In this case, I may want to add a coffee shop, for example. And as you can see, I've added it really easily as a template. So now, for example, if I go ahead and press new event and I type in coffee shop as that comes up as a template, I can quickly go ahead and add that as a template and press schedule. So I can go inside of the template and actually modify a bit of the details. For example, adding a different color of the item, the location and a bit more details. So it's almost like having a Google Calendar template quickly accessible with all of the details that you traditionally go with. And I will be setting up my own proper templates very soon. So obviously this calendar blocking concept has been used pretty regularly and it's not something that some people get on with. For example, I work very well with task management applications, but I know some people work well with calendar applications at the same time. So there's a lot of conversation about these hybrid applications and I've got two that I wanted to recommend to you folks. The first is one called Sun Sama. I always recommend this for those who are looking to create daily tasks and also be able to see the day that it's associated to. Uh, it works sort of like blending Trello and Todoist, but with a calendar-like experience. And you can go ahead and prioritize or, or organize your day based on that. And what's nice is you can actually manage how that looks in your calendar per time slot as well. And I know that some people also like the, the action of clicking into a task and be able to actually tick that item off. Now, the second tool I wanted to mention is one called Focuster, still a relatively uh, small company, and both of these are more the paid product applications, but it allows you to create a schedule of your to-dos. You can add your to-dos to a list and then drag them into your calendar so you can actually see an agenda for your day. But what's different about Focuster is it actually uses AI to crumple down your, your routine to make it fit uh, your daily habits and also uh, take advantage of the time span that you've given yourself. So for example, if you have an eight hour work day, it'll crunch your tasks that are most important into that period of time using artificial intelligence. Now it's a little bit steeper, I guess, because it blends a calendar and a to-do list application, but it's $9.99 for the basic plan. But as you can imagine, that auto scheduling can be a nice way for people who go into daily planning a little bit more uh, looking to get some assistance. And it works with Apple and Microsoft and Google calendars. So that might be a nice experience for you. So folks, hopefully you found that calendar blocking feature useful. Please do let me know if you're using it in the description below, but I, I can imagine uh, many of you may have questions or uh, looking for recommendations for tools around this. So I'm more than happy to help you in the comments below. So feel free to leave any of your questions and I'll be more than happy to help. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, subscribe and if you would like, and if you enjoyed this video, please do like it here on YouTube. Anyway, folks, big thank you. I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.